In a world with a prophecy of being constantly attacked by a horde of monsters, only four heroes of legends will be able to save the day. Cause you know they couldn't have prepared themselves for the coming waves of catastrophe, but said oh well, we'll just leave it to the heroes to take care of. Except as it turns out, three of them turned out to be idiots. Well, at least we have one competent person who can save the day. The shield hero. Oh wait, he's a noob. What's up mortals, my name is Trina, our writer is Noah's stories, and welcome to our deep dive in the protagonist of Rising of the Shield Hero, Naofumi Iwatani himself. Naofumi Iwatani was an average 20 year old college sophomore who one day randomly got teleported to another world while reading a book, where he now had to serve as one of the cardinal heroes. He is generally a trusting, caring, and positive person. When he first arrived in Melomark, he was very enthusiastic about being summoned to a new world, and he was the only hero willing to help out right off the bat. He's an extremely hard worker, willing to put in the work once he set his mind to something. This is how he taught himself how to compound medicine, as well as learned how to craft accessories and learned how to read and write in a language in a very short amount of time. Due to the fact he is a release and an expert strategist, he can quickly manage to analyze situations and pick the best path forward, even if it seems unconventional to others. Even when not in combat, he is constantly considering the best course of action to strengthen himself and his allies to make future challenges more manageable. Despite his caring nature, if he gets betrayed, which happens in the first episode of the series, he'll take a turn for the more cynical. However, as seen in the alternate timelines, he'll retain most of his original personality if even one person vouches for him during the false trial the king and first princess set up. Shortly after his betrayal at the House of Malti, Naofumi developed a hatred for all womankind, but even in the darkened state, his kind nature shone through in his actions. Despite that, he wasn't constantly justifying his actions as evil in his mind. For example, he treated the illness of his first slave, Raftalia, and even bought her toys, all with a justification that if she was healthy and happy, she'd work better. Even when he helped out entire towns, he took small rewards so he could justify it to himself. Rewards such as the produce he produced or a broken carriage. It's this relationship that informs and severely impacts his character arc. Throughout the series, this arc is built around him slowly and progressively returning to his normal self thanks to the help of his companions, Raftali especially. Despite this, he retains some characteristics such as being strict when necessary and being willing to show his dark side on many occasions if it helps move things along. At least Raftali and his other companions manage to keep him in line whenever he goes overboard. Because if your friends can't stop you from taking over the world, then who will? When first summoned, he wasn't one to intolerate injustices, a sentiment that only grew stronger after his betrayal. However, he didn't want anyone to go through the same things he did and help many people under the name the Saint of the Heavenly Fowl, helping many people around the land of Melramark. Now Fumi was specifically chosen by the Cardinal Shield Spirit because he embodied the specific qualities needed, meaning he is someone who seeks to protect others and inspires them to do the same. Unlike with the other cardinal spirits, the shield spirit got its first choice, that being Naofumi. Are we sure the shield spirit wasn't drunk when he picked? You know what? Forget I said anything. Because he is a wielder of the cardinal shield hero, you know the title the show is named after. Naofumi is burned with many responsibilities. He is one of only four heroes that make the primary defense against the waves of catastrophe. He and the other heroes are meant to combat these waves together, postponing the countdown to the next in the process until finally beating the enemy behind the waves a duty which for most of the story only Nalfami takes seriously, with the other douches seeing it as some sort of video game event. Besides that, he plays a distinct role in most religions around the world, giving him significant political influence. In most nations, he is hailed as one of four gods, and still felt as the one and only god. But in Melromark, due to their hatred of Siltvet, he is generally seen as a devil. Talk about bad luck. I mean, you go to the one place where you can't catch a break. As previously stated, Naofumi starts off with a cardinal shield, a legendary weapon that is stuck to his body. This defaults him to the role protector of the group, as he is not allowed to use any other weapons. Like all the other cardinal weapons, the shield starts out relatively weak, but by collecting materials and copying other shields, it gains new forms that come with bonuses as well as new and unique abilities. As his arsenal of shields grows, he has been known to main specific shields that give him good bonuses and abilities. The prominent examples throughout the first season are the Light Metal Shield, the Chimera Viper Shield, and the Soul Eater Shield. Naofumi makes good use of all the skills he acquires when the situation calls for it, 
The ability he tends to main are the airstrike shield, shooting star shield, and shield prison. Although as he grows, he acquires other interesting ones that he adds to his arsenal. He even has skills he likes to use outside of combat, such as the bio plant modification skill. As he discovers through later conversations with heroes, there are upgraded methods that can be implemented to strengthen the weapon, which comes with significant boots, essentially making Naofumi's defense impenetrable. Hey, psst, if you're interested in what all the methods are, we already have a video out on this, so go check it out. When Raftali was taken from Naofumi in the fourth episode, he reached the depths of despair, which allows him to unlock the Curse series. Naofumi's predisposition to anger meant he unlocked the Rage series, which came with a lot of bonuses. Although it's important to know that each attack and skill that comes with this series has its set of drawbacks along with it. It's a double-edged sword, or well, shield in this case. He also possesses many strengths that do not come from his shield, like his amazing cooking skills, which has spun off into its own manga. The inability to get drunk or motion sick, lucky bastard. And lastly, the ability to get along with animals very well. Now, despite the many strengths he has, Nalfumi is not infallible. The shield he's stuck with means he cannot deal any damage, so he has no choice but to rely on his companions to attack when in a fight. When summoned, he had the least amount of knowledge about the world, which was seen as a significant weakness, but that quickly proved to be a strength, as he wasn't limited by the worldview the knowledge brought. He was able to learn what it really meant to be in a new world, empathizing with the people instead of viewing them as simple NPCs. The Cardinal Shield may make his defense extremely high, but there are still attacks that can ignore the defense stat, making his one strength useless. Some attacks can reverse the defense into damage. The Arc and Glass have used these two types of attacks are now Fumi's most glaring weaknesses, something he'll most definitely work tirelessly to remedy. He is also fallible in the human sense. His strategies can fail, and he can sometimes get caught up taunting his opponents or trying to reason with them, creating an opportunity for them to attack. However, even when he gives them this opportunity, he has proven to be able to quickly reverse the situation back to an advantage. During his adventures, Naofumi has made many allies and lifelong friends. The most important of his relationships is Raftalia, the first slave he bought. He acquired her when on the brink of health and after nursing her back to health and helping her comfort her traumas due to slavery in the first wave. Naofumi gave her a goal in life, to fight against the waves to prevent what happened to her to happen again. In return, Raltalia dedicated herself to her master, proclaiming herself to be his sword. Even when given her freedom, she chose to return to Naofumi, going as far as putting him back together after he was fully consumed by rage. Relationship goals, am I right? While their relationship starts out as master and slave, their relationship grows into a parental-style friendship, eventually going a bit farther than that. The second ally Naofumi recluded was Philo, a Philolil that he had hatched and nurtured until she became a filial queen. Naofumi has trained the blonde Loli since she was a chick. In return, the bundle of energy and black hole when it comes to food has stuck by her master's side, aiding him with everything he may need, even helping Raltalia keep his rage issues in check. The next permanent to the party that Naofumi recruited is Rishia, a timid green-haired girl. She reminded Naofumi a lot of himself, so he took her in and helped empower her after Itsuki had her framed and kicked out of the party, which happened toward the end of the first season, a course of events the anime hasn't covered adequately. There are many more adventures and heroes that join now for me through the run of the light novel series, but as the anime's second season hasn't aired yet, we're going to keep that for ourselves. The party has seen some temporary members as well. For example, although depicted as a main part of the party in the anime, Melty only really takes a secondary role. She has other duties to attend to, so she can't fully join the group, but her budding friendship with Philo makes her an integral part of the story. She managed to mend the relationship between Nalfumi and Melramark after all. We'd be foolish if we didn't mention Erhard, the kind-hearted blacksmith who took a chance on Naofumi and believed he was innocent when no one else was. He's the first person to treat Naofumi fairly after the false accusations, which led to a great friendship and much business for the smith. He's arguably Naofumi's closest ally and a confidant for the young man. His relationship with the other heroes have even improved. While at first they were indifferent against him, they did not believe him when he was accused of sexual assault, which left them a bad impression of the shield wielder. Nevertheless, they still reluctantly agreed to work with him. Aside from Motoyatsu, who was influenced by the first prince's butted heads with Naofumi a couple of times, they maintained a reluctant partnership. Even after Naofumi's name was cleared, thanks to the queen, their relationship still stayed sour because of their previous beliefs against Naofumi along with their own beliefs around the world, about the world, and themselves, leading them to very reluctantly work together. They're going to have to hit rock bottom before they realize what's wrong with them, aren't they? Well, at least they no longer seem as totally evil. This reluctance to improve allowed Naofumi to leave them in the dust, despite him starting out weaker. Throughout the first season, he went from a useless noob to the most OP character in the show. Naofumi is quite the interesting character. 
His name is ruined, and he was thrown to the streets penniless, and the struggles he has gone through have endeared him to many of us. Despite all that, he struggled his way up the ladder, slowly gaining allies and helping people, even when other heroes screw things up. We'll be watching the anime's second season to see how his adventures continues, will you? How do you think Naofumi's growth will be showcased in the show? I hope this video gave you a bit more insight into Naofumi's character without spoiling anything major. This video may be over, but if you're interested in some great storytelling, there are some channels you can check out. We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels have great videos retelling the stories of your favorite anime with a small twist. But if you are interested in some Shield Hero content, why not check out Noah Stories channel? Well, that's it from us for this video. Don't forget to check out everyone who worked on this video in the description below. Thank you for watching, mortals, and have a great day.